want to welcome all of His Glory Nation. From east to west to north to south, we bring you the word of His glory for today. Today is January 27, 2017. It's the 29th of Tevet, uh, year 5,777 on the Hebrew calendar. Today's word of the day is going to be from John, the Apostle John. This will be in his uh, first, uh, first John uh, uh, chapter 2. We're going to talk about who the Christ is, and we're going to talk about who the Antichrist is. And John is going to be uh, very specific on this. Again, John's audience here, uh, again, again, John is the Apostle John. He is the one that Jesus loved. He is the one that uh, Jesus had Mary go be with at the cross. John is the author of the Gospel, John. John is also the author of, uh, of the book of Revelation, uh, other than the seven epistles that Christ him wrote himself. And he also wrote uh, epistles, uh, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Today we're going to be in 1 John. And then it's, this message is to the church, or the so-called church. And uh, he wants to make sure that we are following God uh, through his son, Jesus Christ. And he's going to tell us who the Christ is, and we're going to talk about the Antichrist. Believe it or not, uh, whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, everybody knows the Bible, uh, pretty much two things from the Bible. They know uh, Armageddon, and they know 666 and the Antichrist. So we're going to put that in perspective today, who the Antichrist is, where he's coming from, where he'll, where he'll end up being, and ultimately we know where he's going, to the lake of fire, with the false prophet and then his master, the evil one, uh, the, the liar, the father of all lies, as Jesus says, Lucifer, after the white throne judgment. But first, let's go, so John is talking to the so-called church uh, on this, this message. So he says in verse John 2, 4, he says, He who says, I know him, meaning saying, I know the Christ, meaning the Messiah. Christ, again, Christ in um, the Greek means uh, Christos. Christos means anointed, Messiah. And again, in the Hebrew, he would be Messiah, the Mashiach in, uh, in, the, in the Hebrew. Uh, and, his and his name is Yeshua in Hebrew. That's Jesus in the Greek. So that's his name. But his title is Christ, Christos in Greek. So he is the anointed one, the Messiah, the one that the prophets talked about, the one that Moses in the Torah talked about, the one that David talked about in Psalm 2. Uh, he says, he who, uh, he who sits and says, I know him, that means no Christ, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So that's a pretty strong word from the Apostle Paul that says, if I, you know the Christ, if you know Jesus Christ and you have Christ in your heart, and you're not obedient to him, to his commandments from the Father, then you don't know him, you're a liar. Because if we love the Lord, we will be obedient to him. Yes, we fall short every day. It's not talking about the sin nature, because we all fall short of the glory of God. That's what 1 John 1, 9 is all about. It's called the Christian's bar of soap. Key word is Christian's bar of soap. This means after salvation and our, our sanctification walk, we're going to fall down. And that's what 1 John 1, 9, he says, you know, once we sin, confess our sins, that he who in heaven is faithful and true will, will forgive us of our sins and get back on track. So we're not just talking regular sin. We're talking denial and being disobedient to the word of God. Like many of the churches are today, saying, well, I like this part of the Bible, but this, 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 this. No, nope, not for me. I don't believe in it. My, I, my thoughts are higher than God's thoughts. And John is warning us in these latter days, the days of him, and then most importantly, the days before the Christ would come. And we'll show you what the events have to happen according to Scripture for the Antichrist, the true Antichrist, to be revealed. So that's who the Christ is, and, and John is unequivocally telling us that we have to be obedient. We can't say we know him and are of him if we're not loving him and being obedient. Obedience is part of love. You don't love and that, then be disobedient of the heart. It's the conditions of one's heart. If you're truly in love, agape love with the Most High God through Jesus Christ, then you're going to be obedient to what he and the Father has to say. So now we're going to skip down to what Antichrist means. This is the only place in the Bible, believe it or not, <clears throat> where the term Antichrist means or is. Other places in the Bible, Paul calls him the, the lawless one. The Old Testament calls him the, the Assyrian, uh, the, the, the uh, lawless one uh, throughout the Old Testament as well. Um, so there's many Antichrists that have come. We're going to read what, what uh, John says first, and then we'll go in and dissect uh, who the Antichrist has been, what the spirit of the Antichrist is then, today, and always will be in the end, the end times of the Lord. 
But the, 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 you, could, you could basically say the Antichrist is, uh, in the Greek, is an opponent of the Messiah, is the, is the Greek definition of, of Antichristo, I mean, uh, opponent against him. But you could say also that he's a pseudotype Christ. So he's coming in like a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's going to act and smell and taste like Christianity, but he's going to be perverted of the word, and he's going to deny the Son of God. He's going to deny Jesus Christ. And we're going to see what John tells us. Again, all, all, uh, the, 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 John is going to tell us, again, from the Apostle John of the Gospel, he's going to tell us here um, what the spirit of the Antichrist is. So let's go to verse 21, 21 uh, John 2. And I have, have I not written to you because you do, you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of truth? I've written you because you know truth, and you know what a lie is, and it's truth. The truth is the Messiah, the, the, the Christ. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? It says the liar is anyone who denies that, that Yeshua is the Messiah, that Christ in the Greek is the, is, is, is the, the Messiah, the, the anointed one. He, and he continues here in 22. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. So anybody that denies the Son also denies the Father, and he is an antichrist, an opponent to Christ. Against him is what he's saying. And verse 23, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who has acknowledged the Son has the Father also. You cannot get to the Father without the Son. John is being crystal clear. It is through the Christ. And most religions on the face of the earth, other than Christianity itself, will say, well, Jesus was a, was a good man. He was a prophet. He was, he was this or he was that. Some will even deny that Christ even uh, lived. And there's, there's a secular evidence to prove that without a shadow of doubt. But Christianity and the love of Jesus Christ bases on, is he the Son of God and is he God himself? And you cannot get to the Father unless you, you uh, open up your heart to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And that's the, the bridge that we stand on. That's the mountain that we stand on. And that is what separates eternal life, because that's what Paul's, or John's going to tell us right here. So he says, acknowledge the Son also has the Father. Verse 34, therefore, let them abide in you which you heard from the beginning. You've known this from the beginning. If you, what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and the Father. Remember, Jesus in the Gospel says, um, My Father has sent me, and through me you will be of me, and you will be of the Father, and we will all be in one, because I and the Father are in one, meaning two. And then when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are in the Trinity, but it's through the Son only, the Messiah. And 25, this is key. And John says in, in verse 25, And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. He promised us through the Son that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way, the shepherd through the shepherd's gate, and that's the only way to eternal life, according to John, and according to the love of our hearts and our love relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's talk about an antichrist. John's talking about the spirit of the antichrist here. So anybody that denies that, that, that Jesus is not the Son of God is an antichrist, the spirit of an antichrist, and we're to, to pray for them, but, but distance ourselves from them. The spirit of the antichrist has been on the face of the earth, and literal antichrists have come throughout the, earth, the world already. Satan has always had an antichrist in the waiting on the, on the earth, not knowing exactly when God is going to say enough and send him in. Nimrod was one of the first antichrists. He was against God, and then when we get in deeper into our teaching in the book of Genesis, Yasser, and Jubilee, will show you how bad uh, Nimrod really, really was. Much, much, uh, much worse than what the book of Gen Gen Genesis tells us. He was the first Antichrist. We've had Antichrists like the Hitlers across the world. Satan has always had the demonic 666, which is the demonic trinity, his form of an Elohim. God has his Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who are the Word and were before time. That's the, that's the trinity of the divinity, and that is eternal life through the Son of the, of the true Elohim of seven. And then you have the Elohim of six, which is Satan. And he'll always uh, pop, prop up an antichrist to go against God on, on the earth, whether it's a false god, whether it's a man doing the work of Satan. And then he'll have the spirit of the antichrist that works in his demonicness to give falseness, to bring false doctrine. That's so why Jesus says we have to be alert in these latter days. Anybody denies the name of Jesus Christ as the Son of God denies the Father. 
and this is very crucial. So that's where the term 666 comes. We know the number six represents man in the world, and that was Satan's demonic uh, 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 trinity to come against God the Most High when he was thrown out of heaven. He says, I will be like the Most High God. And ever since that day, he's, he's created a, dyna, or a, a, a de, demonic trinity to fight God the Father. So he is a, a like of a father, and he'll always have a man that is an anti or a lawless one as the Christ, and then he'll have his demonic realm, and then we see in the book of Revelation that we'll actually have a false prophet who will bring in the false, of, um, the false teachings of the demonic, but it will hide itself in the middle of Christianity. It'll be that, it'll be that, uh, that, 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 that bird inside the, the, the mustard seed, and when we can't be fooled, we got to know what Scripture says, because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way. So when do we know when this Antichrist is going to come? We don't, but we know the events that will happen. It's just my conjecture. I believe the Antichrist is the, the last one, the true one that will be in the book of Revelation, is born today. He's alive today. And uh, because we can see through Bible prophecy, all these events that Jesus talked about and the prophets talked about are happening at, at rapid speed. We see Psalm 83 on the horizon. We see the, the foundation of Ezekiel 38 and 39 on the horizon, Isaiah 17. Uh, Israel being back in the land, Israel coming back uh, into recapturing the city of Jerusalem, rebuilding of the third temple, and I can go on and on and on with the prophecy. So every prophecy that needs to be fulfilled uh, by the Lord uh, has been filled. So there's nothing that has to be done that hasn't been done. Uh, so we know by uh, t Paul's teaching in Thessalonians, he says that once the fullness, and he talks about this in Romans too, once the fullness of the Gentiles is complete, so that means there is a number that only God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit know in the kingdom of heaven right now. That there's a number of the Gentiles that he brought out the church and he brought out the Spirit of God to know Jesus Christ. And he is the way, the truth, and the life to accept his Son for eternal, eternal life. And there is a number out there that we don't know because he is the beginning and the end. And when that number comes in, that last soul that comes into the kingdom of glory and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that is called the fullness of the Gentiles. And the cup is stopped. And that's what triggers the church, the true church, the elect church, the church of Philadelphia to be harpazoed. But two key things happen after the harpazo of the church. So it's got to be in this order according to Scripture. It is the fullness of the Gentiles, which nobody knows when that's going to happen, and that's why we don't know the time or the hour that Christ is coming down for his church. But we know, based on the Jewish wedding ceremony, is probably within a 48-hour window, and that's part of our teaching in the Church of Philadelphia that you can see on hisglory.tv. So then the harpazo of the church, and then once the harpazo of the church, Paul tells us something significant happens. The Holy Spirit goes up with the elect church, so there's chaos on the earth like no time in the history of the world because the Holy Spirit is not keeping things in order anymore. And once the Holy Spirit is left up, Paul tells us, then the Antichrist will be revealed. So the true church, the elect church, will not see who the Antichrist is from earth. We will see them, we will see who he is on heaven, in, in heaven. But we also know a couple other things. He's called the lawless one. He's called the Assyrian in the Old Testament several times in, uh, in Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah. We know in Jeremiah 51, the key place in the end days will be the modern day Babylon. Or bringing back, the, as Daniel said in the, in, in the book of Daniel in Revelation, bringing back all the world powers that were ruled out of Babylon. Modern day Babylon will be reinstalled. And that's what's so interesting about what's happening with the United States of America and Israel today with the United Nations. Is, or, the United States is pushing back and defunding the United Nations. There's bills going through Congress to even talk about getting the United Nations out of the nation of the United States and cut off their funding. And the rumor is, very strong rumor, there's actually a building there if you go look at, is that the United Nations will go back to Babylon. Here's another part that is very, very fascinating that the media does not catch because they don't know the Scripture. The media doesn't catch because they don't know the Old Testament. Most Christians don't catch this because they're in denominational teachings and they, re and they believe in replacement theology, that the church has placed it, replaced Israel and Israel doesn't exist. 
The central part of all Bible prophecy is around the nation of Israel. God has an everlasting covenant to Israel. That is false teaching that is being done by the denominations. Therefore, they don't know the Old Testament. By knowing the Old Testament, we know the signs and the seasons and things that are coming. Jesus quoted the Old Testament and everything he said. He quoted it word for word. So we know in the end times um, that Babylon will be re-instituted re, re, um, as, the, as the empire of or the global headquarters of the Antichrist. And the Persian Empire, the, the, the Ayatollah, not too long ago, this is probably about two or three months ago, the per Iran, which is Iran, they weren't called Iran until the early, I think it was 1940s. They were the, nation, the Persian nation. Remember, there was the Assyrians, that's where he'd come from, and then, then it was the Babylonians, and then it was the uh, Medes and Persians, then it was the Greeks, and then it was the Romans. And that fits into the, the, Daniel and the Revelation, how this will all be reestablished around one major city, Babylon, and that's where he will be coming from. And the false prophet will be in that particular area as well, preaching an anti-message against the, 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 the Savior, Jesus Christ. And so uh, the nation of Iran, uh, which is Persia, is trying to recapture the Persian Empire. That's why you see them going into Iraq. They're going into Syria. They're basically uh, in control of Syria today. Syria is really, really no longer a state. It is really being uh, uh, prepped up by Iran and uh, their proxies with help of the Russian government, where all of these are also part of the uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, which is on the horizon. But the nation of Iran, which is Persia, their number one thing they want to do is, besides annihilate Israel off the face of the earth, that's why nuclear weapons is such an important thing, and they will get them because we see that in 38, Ezekiel 38 and 39, but God conquers them. And uh, so the Ayatollah has said that they want to reestablish the Persian Empire, and when he made this next statement, it went over everybody's head because the church doesn't understand the Old Testament, and the media has no idea how this fits into Bible prophecy. He said, we, we don't look at uh, Tehran as our world uh, headquarters. We look at our capital as Babylon. That should get a lot of people scratching their heads and say, what did he say? He said Babylon. He wants to reestablish Babylon as the headquarters of the Persian Empire back to the way it was under Alexander the Great, under the Greek Empire, how it was in the Medes and Persians who came after uh, uh, Babylon, uh, the Babylonians, which was literally all those powers were in Babylon. So these events are happening and they're on a horizon. So all these things look out for. But the key thing that we look out for now is not only the Bible prophecy, but making sure that our heart is ready with Jesus Christ because tomorrow is never granted. Yes, the church could be raptured in a week or a month or a year or 10 years, but we, we, we could lose our life tonight. No hour is given to us. That's why we have to make sure that our heart is right with the Most High through His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who gave up His life as a ransom so that we could be brought into His kingdom in love forever by saying, Jesus, You are my Lord, You are my Savior, and I repent of my sins, and I want to follow Your ways and be obedient to You. That's what John was talking about in verse 2-4. Who anyone who says he knows the Son of God and God in the second head but his disobedient is a liar. And those who deny that the, the, the Christ is the Son of God is the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist. So in this time and age of Satan being the great deceiver, seek truth. If you're not sure through traditions all over the world because you come from a different religion that taught you something different, ask. Ask the Lord. Pray to him tonight and say, Jesus Christ, if you are the true Messiah of the universe, Talk to me. Speak to me. Show me a vision. Show me a dream. Put your heart on my heart and show me your glory. And I will serve you as the Most High. Praise His name. And we pray that all will, will do that prayer that do not know Jesus Christ. Those who feel the, 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 the feeling of Jesus Christ on your heart right now and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me right now and you'll have eternal life through Him if you meet it on your heart and you confess it with your mouth. Jesus, you are my king. I understand you are the, the anointed. You are the Messiah. You are died, you are resurrected, and you are my king of kings and lord of hosts. I repent of my sins, because I know you've taken them on the cross away from me forever. Sins past, present, and future. And I commit myself to you as my lord and my king, and I will be obedient to you until you take me home. 
If you prayed that prayer, you have salvation with the Most High God through Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of hosts. We pray that 1 John has been a blessing, who the Antichrist is, what he was, and who he will be, and who truly is the Christ and the only way for eternal life. Praise his name. God bless.